Shane Jeraminski has been a pharmacist for 14 years. Pharmacists are the bluest white collar workers in America. But he says in addition to filling prescriptions, checking drug interactions and counseling patients, pharmacists now also answer phones, do health screenings, work drive throughs and give shots, including now the COVID-19 vaccine. We have pharmacists working 14, 15 hour shifts and so many of them are afraid to even come forward because they know they can easily be replaced. NBC News spoke with 31 retail pharmacists and technicians across 15 states. All say pressures to be profitable have resulted in harried working conditions that can potentially affect patient safety. Of comedy, most of you saw the NBC Nightly News piece um, that I just played earlier. And first, I, I just want to say thank you to Shane and his wife, Marilyn, for speaking out on behalf of the profession, especially for his wife, Marilyn. I know it's probably not easy to speak out, especially when you still work for uh, a retail chain. And then I also want to thank Adele Kaplan um, for helping write that story. You know, I've talked to I've talked to her twice, and we text back and forth periodically, and she's really trying to help uh, shed light on the issues in retail pharmacy. I really like the piece. The only thing I didn't like about it is that it was too short. <laughs> like, luckily I was recording it, but I, I went to the bathroom when I came back. It was already over, and. Uh, you know, I just thought that, you know, I really wish that, you know, the piece could have been 30, a full 30 minutes or a full hour. But I know hopefully it's the beginning of something bigger. I know before it aired, um, I was talking to Shane and he was telling me about it. And he was just saying, man, there's just so much about pharmacy that he wanted to talk about and share and just didn't get the chance to because the piece was kind of short and. He really wants to know what else we could do to kind of help bring about change in pharmacy. And it made me think, what is the best way to bring about change in retail pharmacy? Because I actually Googled um, terrible working conditions, retail pharmacy, um, pharmacies understaffed. And I found articles all the way to like 2014, New York Times, BBC, Drug Topics, Chicago Tribune plethora of other articles and I even found like videos on YouTube going back all the way to 2016 talking about pharmacists uh, being overworked pharmacies are understaffed and it seems to me like almost nobody cares like the general public as long as they get their medications they really don't care and it made me think is the best way to bring about change is to continue to make videos about understaffing is it to shed more light on PBMs and maybe find a way to work with corporate to, to talk more about the PBM issue? Is it just pharmacists and technicians? Everybody needs to just email their congressman or congresswoman. So just let me know, what do you think is the <clears throat> best way to bring about change in, in retail pharmacy? Hopefully this starts a discussion. Hopefully this brings up new ideas. Hopefully this brings people together. Um, that's part of the reason why I made this shirt to help support Putt. Um, it's just to shed more light on PBMs. And hopefully maybe if we can get a lot more PBM reform at each at the state level, um, we can bring about change in retail pharmacy when it comes to uh, the understaffing issues once the reimbursement issue is fixed. But as always, thanks for watching. Please share. Please subscribe. And have a good day.